everybody, you're tuned into Music Box. I'm your host, Maria Cosette. Today, I have a very funny and very cool guest with me, Ara Basil, stand up comedian. How Hi, are Maria. you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Likewise, I'm so happy you're here, honestly. I saw my actually. I've been suffering from this infection for the past four or five days. You know, <laughs> uh, my eye was getting puffy. Really? You know, yeah, so I couldn't see out of the right eye. And, uh, you know, I'm between insurance at the moment. So oh, no. Isn't that always the case? Is you... Obamacare getting in your well, way? Well, I thought about getting Obamacare, but then I thought it would be cheaper to get a new A, the new eye, you know, yeah. from the black market <laughs> instead of paying my deductible. That's so, true. I, you know, so I, you know, I, I just wrote it out, you know, like three, four days, the swelling is going down part of the um, you know, but it's always the case, isn't it? When you don't have insurance, something always happens always, to you. Always, always, of you, course. You pay for 50 years and then nothing happens to uh -huh. you. And the winner is the insurance companies at the end of the day. Always. It's terrible. It's okay. But, uh, well, at least you're here. Thank you. Yes, And exactly. you can see both your eyes are open. Yes, I can see we're both. We are good I may to be go. tearing a little bit from this side, but I'll it's be okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's No worries. So um, I have a lot to talk to you about. You're actually okay. very accomplished in your career and so supportive of numerous charities. So before yes. we get to all of that, mm -hmm. let's talk about your beginnings. What first fueled your drive into getting into comedy? Uh, I, well, when I was a child, um, I watched a lot of stand-up. Um, in the 80s, I think the 80s was the golden age of comedy. Um, Definitely. You, you had a lot of, you know, big names coming out um, and groundbreaking, you know, like Richard Pryor. I was just going to say Richard 80s, Pryor. Yeah. You, can't, you can't start a comedy discussion without talking about yeah. the champ. And, um, you know, Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, um, you know, Bill Cosby. I know I'm going with the African-American comics, but, but they're you know, funny. But they're funny. <laughs> and, you know, George Carlin, uh, Michael yes. Keaton. A lot of people don't remember Michael Keaton as a stand-up comic. But yeah, he was a, a stand-up comic. Uh, Robin Williams, you know, when he, oh, you know, he was hilarious. Billy Crystal, um, you know, so I, I grew up watching a lot of comedy and, and I used to watch a, a lot of, uh, you know, Eddie Murphy with my dad. My dad loved Eddie Murphy. Uh, cool. and, uh, yeah. So, you know, it was always in me, you know, yeah. as, as a child. And, you know, I always had that knack for making people laugh. You know, I knew at the age of six or seven, I know I'm dating myself with this at the moment, but, uh, you know, when I was a, a child, you know, and all the parents would get together, the, you know, the, the, the fathers and yeah. stuff, and they'd say, well, my my son can throw a 40 mile an hour fastball and uh, my son can shoot a three pointer from 50 feet, you know, and, uh, you know, and my dad turned around and goes, my, my son does a great impersonation of George Jefferson walking. So, oh, I remember <laughs> you know, how they would walk. Like that, yeah, you know, like, yeah. So I, I would do the imp impressions and stuff and then it just went from there. You know, I went cool. into school and I became the class clown and I uh, went into college and everything and my friends were all doing films and I wanted to be a director. So I started doing the film and it was terrible and it stunk. Um, and then my friends all uh, said, you know, dude, why don't you do this for me? I'd have a role for you. It's, it's hilarious, you know, yeah. you can do it. And, uh, you know, I went in. I'm like, hey, I kind of like this. You know, it's a lot less work being in front of the camera than behind the camera. Right. And, you know, a lot of my director friends can uh, attest to that. Um, you know, because you go in, you do your job, you read the lines and you're gone. Right. You know, they have to go through the editing and post-production and music That's and scores true. and all that stuff. So it was too much of a headache. So I kind of liked the acting aspect of it. Um, and at the age of 23, 24, I had a quarter life crisis. And I'm like, what am I going to do with my life? Um, you know, which don't, they do exist. You know, psychiatrists make up a lot of things, but yeah. that actually does exist when people get out of college and everything. Yeah, because you have to get you know, it all together at yeah, that point. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So you're like, what am I going to do for the rest of my life? Um, you know, I just, I tried to do stand up and uh, I went out, I took a couple classes classes actually because um, I've always been with that motto of you, you know if you're going to do something you know learn about it right you know, take classes and stuff and uh, I treat a comedy like any other job you know you just can't you know wake up one morning and say I want to be a doctor and you know go to the hospital down the street and perform a you know a open right. heart surgery you can't do that so I went in for classes and stuff and a very accomplished uh, teacher Greg Dean he still teaches I think in Santa Monica took a couple classes with him uh, and then I went in my first show and I stunk well, you know what? <laughs> it's hard, though. Stand-up comedy is one of the hardest things. Yes, yes. It, it is, really, it really is, is. extremely hard. To make people laugh, like, yeah. just like that. And also, I feel like comedians are also very intelligent because you yes. really have to be well-read, well-educated, yep. well, you know, very knowledgeable about whether it's history, current mm -hmm. events, whatever it is. And you kind of have to play on that. Absolutely. Yeah. The only exception to the rule is Cat Williams. But, well, you know. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Kat. I know him Armenian too. Armenian parents and the others are like, oh, Kat Williams of a Godwa. Godwa? 
Gattucci, but it's Pokra. But the job of a stand-up comic um, is to make you guys laugh without any effort, without right. making it seem like it's it's effortless. Exactly. But, you know what you guys don't see is what happens behind the scenes. Mm. Um, we have a joke Rolodex in the back of our heads. Right. Okay. And a just in case one. No, 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 no. We know just like a musician. Uh huh. You have your music set, right? right. You know exactly what songs you're going to play. Right. We have a joke set. So when we get out there, we know which direction we want to take you guys to. I see. So while you guys are laughing at one joke, my mental Rolodex is flipping, and I'm already picked the next card, right. and I'm already ready. So the transition seems seamless to you guys, but it takes a lot of work and practice uh, and rehearsal to get it done. Right. And when people ask me, well, how did you, you know, this joke is hilarious. How did you get to it? I'm like, well, it didn't happen overnight. Right. Usually. You know, I, I, I tell people that want to get into comedy, especially young Armenian kids and stuff, they're like, oh my God, you know, I want to be a comic. I'm like, that's great. My first advice to them is never give up because it's a long, arduous process. And second is, you just can't go up there and be funny. You right. Know, you can be, you know, because there's two types of people, I always think. There's comical people and then there's comedians. And right. the difference is, comics are funny. Comedians say things in a funny way. Right, and exactly. It's the difference. delivery, of course, Absolutely. and it's a whole performance. Of exactly. course, of course. So, you know, when you get a joke, you have a premise, you know, you treat it like a child, mm -hmm. you know, and that child, you cultivate it, you feed it, you grow, you know, you let them grow, and then, you know, and the joke just, just, just becomes its own entity, and it becomes full grown, and then, then you can hit it on the audience. Right. And then, you know, then you have set up punch, set up punch, set up punch, and it's golden, and it's beautiful, and that joke is an adult now, and you just, you just do it on television, on Comedy Central, <laughs> and you just let them off into the wild. Yeah. And never talk about them again. So that's how the joke process is for Interesting. me. Interesting. You know, you just got to keep building it and perfecting it, you know, to the point. There's a lot of people, like, I, I do shows now where I don't do a lot of my old jokes. And it's funny because when I do shows, people start yelling, do the old jokes. You know, I'm like, well, they're old. You're like, I retired you know? then. Yeah, so, but I, st I still do it. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, because I have a funny joke, you know, about Armenians. I haven't done this in years. And I have a funny joke about how Armenian mothers never ever go to Tupperware parties, you know, because there's no reason for them to buy Tupperware. They just use recycled yogurt containers. You know, and, and it's true. It's true, you know, and, and my mother, you know, never never labeled them, you know, so good luck finding the hummus and mutabel right. from last night. <laughs> you know, so and, and everybody just loves that joke. And it's a cheesy joke, yeah. but you know, everybody loved it. So you know, And then always, I think maybe your returning fans to your shows and everything mm -hmm. want to be like, Oh yeah, this one, this one I heard last time he said yeah, this and this exactly. and it's really funny. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, so that's you know, that's you know, that's uh, that's the way I, you know, usually approach the comedy. You I know? see. And well, I definitely have a lot more to talk to you about because okay. you have so many projects going on right now. Yeah, it's a busy year. Yes, and yeah. in the future. Mm -hmm. And you've done a lot with nonprofits. Mm -hmm. So let's take a little break and stay tuned with us. I'm here with Ara Basil. Go to arabasil.com. Just like that. Check it out. Hey guys, you're watching Music Box. I'm your host, Maria Cosette, and I'm here with stand-up comedian extraordinaire, Ara Basil. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good? That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you've collaborated with a number of different comedians. Mm -hmm. uh, one that stands out to me, I mean, a lot of them do, but is Maj Brani. Mm. You've done a, yeah. a, now a big body of work with him, actually, a couple mm. of shows yeah. and everything. How'd you link up with him? He's a funny guy. He's a great guy. Yeah. Um, very, very great guy. He's got a heart of gold. And, um, you know, when I first started doing stand-up, a mutual friend of ours, Sam Tripoli, who's Armenian and Sicilian from New York, um, he came up to me after a show and he's like, hey, you're Armenian? And it was, I was about two, three shows in, so I was very green. Um, and he came up to me, he goes, hey, I, gotta, I, do a, I do a charity Armenian show every year at the Comedy Store, I'll put you on for five minutes. I'm like, hey, that's great, awesome, you know? So I was on a high and, you know, it was 350 Armenians in the main room and I went out there and I stunk it. And, uh, you know, and, uh, but the highlight of the night um, was, you know, you know, performing in front of my people and stuff, of which course. was cool, but uh, was meeting Moz. And you know, Maz was a great guy. And you know, when I, you know, we started doing more more gigs together, gigs together, and we we're we we're at the haha -ha every weekend and all that stuff. And at the time, Maz's career was just taking off. Right. So you know, he did Comedy Central, but you know, he was he was 
right up there, you know. So he was he was going. He did a couple of TV shows and and movies and everything. <clears throat> and um, the you know the the great part about Moz is, you know, he he was always there for me. Every time I had a question, I could call him any time of day, and he always gives me advice. Right. You know, he was like a big brother. You know, he still is like my big brother in comedy. Yeah, that's great to have yeah. in yeah. the entertainment world. Absolutely, and he's always there for me. Every time like he has a show, he'd be like, hey, you want to open for me? Hey, you want to host this show for me? Um, you know, we recently did I had a small role in his movie, his upcoming film. Yeah. Yes, I was going yeah. to talk about that. Yeah, so he gave me a small role in that film, and uh, you know, I had a lot of fun. And you know, he's one of the greatest guys I've ever known in the business. You That's know, he's awesome. very true to heart, and you know, he's a great guy. And uh, you know, he's like my big brother in comedy. You know, him and uh, my brother-in-law, actually, Angelo Tsarukas. Yes. Yeah. So actually, let's talk about that. Sure. Um, you are co-producing and co-hosting an upcoming show. Yes. With him. Yes. And um, so that's going to be June 30th. Yeah, June 30th. At the Comedy Store. Mm -hmm. And I truly suggest everyone goes out and gets their <laughs> tickets because you're about to hear who the lineup is. So <laughs> I don't think lay I'm, it on him. I don't think I'm at liberty to discuss the really? lineup. Really? Yeah, I can't. Okay, love. I can't. Just go to the show. He told me, though. I can't. I won't tell you. Though. I can't uh, release the lineup just yet, but it'll okay, be released fine. on Facebook. But, but yeah. just know that. Um, it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> They're all Canadian comics, except for me. I'm doing about four or five minutes in the beginning, introducing Angelo, and he's going to carry the show from there. Um, they're all comedians from stage and screen for the past 30 years. So if you have a lot of Canadian comics that yeah. you think are great, and you grew up watching them, you'd love this show. We have a lot of uh, brand new trailblazing comedians, world-renowned comedians. Once again, I'm not naming names, but... Yeah, uh, it's, you're... it's really, really going to be an amazing show. And where yeah. could people get tickets Tickets uh, can be purchased on itsmyseat.com. All righty, yeah. itsmyseat.com. Mm -hmm. You heard it here. I mean, we didn't reveal the lineup, but really, get the tickets. <laughs> so anyways, um, and now what about all your collaborative work you've done with nonprofits? I think it's so admirable that you're using your platform, mm -hmm. you know, for... Uh, the greater good, I yeah. should say. So what are some of the nonprofit organizations you've oh, collaborated man. with? They've, many, I know. There have been so many. Um, aside from schools, we did a fundraiser for Pili Boss last year, which went really well. So Yay, I think we're going to, yeah, yeah. And uh, we're going to continue doing that um, every year. Um, I did a Tu Feng Chan fundraiser that Maz did this year, actually. Nice. Yeah, so that was a lot of fun. And then, uh, geez, nonprofits, um, the SOAR Foundation, mm -hmm. uh, the Society of Orphan Armenian Relief. I think it's a great organization. It's run, truly, by, fan truly. Yeah, run by a fantastic group of people. And, uh, you know, I love doing work for them. Um, the Armenian Bone Marrow Donor Registry, I did shows for them for seven years, you know, and. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I like uh, helping them out. And, uh, you know, AFMA is a nonprofit. But, yes, uh, of course. Uh, yeah, AFMA Sil uh, with the AFMA with Sylvia Manassian. And, uh, you know, AFMA is, uh, you know, they, they promote the work, the, you know, the, the music, the film and the arts, right. you know, with the Armenian uh, filmmakers and which artists. Which is awesome. Yeah, which is great. Um, it gives them a platform to showcase their stuff and everything. Um, did a couple of work for the Greek, uh, Greek film institute, you know, uh, Greek festival. Fil yeah, Greek oh, film with festival. Alex Kalagnan, with Alex Kalagnan, my yeah, dear, exactly. dear Alex. <coughs> and um, there's so many more I can't, I can't yeah. remember right now. But I mean, it, it, again, it's very admirable, and I always tell my um, audience here that you know we like to convey a positive message. Absolutely. And so to have people like you is just you know really. Perfect for Thank my you, show, man. actually. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, I mean, keep on doing it. I know that at, in the Armenian community, we truly love and support you. Thank you. Um, and it's it's fantastic that you're supporting Shout organizations mercy. in return. Um, so what about some future projects you have coming up? I know that you have <laughs> one in September with the wonderful Kev Orkin. <laughs> yes, Kev is going to be in town for uh, one weekend, and we're doing a major show, a big show at the Comedy Store on September 7th. Uh, and another very talented comedian uh, as well, Michael Patrick. Uh, will be on the show and we're calling it the three armos and a piano comedy tour <laughs> yes we're gonna walk out there so the, fitting. I yeah, like it. we're gonna walk out there in the mariachi outfit you know like chevy chase martin short and you know the other guy chevy chase that's, that's what it was and uh, no it's, it should be a lot of fun so tickets for that show go on sale in about two weeks okay so, um in addition to that um i am working on my second comedy special wonderful so that should be released hopefully by december or january yes uh, yeah so that'll be a lot of fun um uh, Many copies of my original special still exist on my website, so go to yes. arabazel.com and uh, buy it, running on Armenian time. <laughs> Way to plug in my DVD. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I mean, that's, you know, that's pretty much it. And then a couple other nonprofits here and there. Awesome. We just haven't set the dates and stuff. Right. Yeah. I love it. Well, speaking yeah. of, since we brought it up, let's check out some footage of your performances, shall we? Absolutely. Check it out. Yeah. 
been a terrible year for me so far, man. I'm part of the 600,000 unemployed people in California. Do we have anybody else here to play? And yet you still spend your money coming out to support the performing arts. Good for you. I officially fulfilled the destiny of becoming the perfect Armenian stereotype. I am collecting unemployment, yet I'm still driving a BMW. No money for food, I don't need to eat. You're going to foreclose my home, I move back with my parents. You're taking my car, I don't think so, mother bitch. From my cold dead hands, you know. That's how we are, man. Armenians deal with cash-only businesses for situations like this, when the economy's in the toilet. Everybody's saying, buy gold, buy gold, right? The dollar's not worth anything. Armenians in downtown are like, what the hell do you think we've been doing for 50 years, scratching our asses? We don't believe in the stock market. You ask any Armenian what the stock market is, their first response is, oh, I don't shop there. I only shop at Jones Market. 401k, what is that? My children are my 401k. When they move out, I move in with them. Hey guys, you're watching Music Box. I'm your host, Maria Cosette, and I'm here with stand-up comedian, Ara Basil. So, I'm really enjoying the show so far. It's going by really fast. As am I. Yeah. yeah. No, no, it's good, it's good. <laughs> Um, so I do want to ask you, you know, out of all the performances you've done, mm -hmm. which one is the most memorable to you? Ah, oh, jeez, there's, uh, there's a lot of them. You um, can name a couple. We could cheat. Hey, it's my show. We could do it. Let's see. Um, I had a lot of, you know, one of my one of my favorite shows I ever did was opening for my friend Pavlo's band at the Ford Amphitheater. Oh yes, yeah, I remember yeah, that. That concert. was that was a fun that was a fun night. It was an open atmosphere, and I right. never did comedy outside before, aside from festivals. That but, venue uh, is the venue uh, is nice. beautiful. Yeah, you know, so that was kind of cool. Um, performing with my brother-in-law Angelo uh, in Canada, Toronto at the Panasonic Theater in front of 1,500. That was another, uh, you know, fun night for me. Definitely. But I gotta say, the best night of comedy I've ever had so far in my career would have to be one night at the Hollywood Improv. It was a regular Wednesday night, and there was a special outing for the uh, uh, an institution for disabled people. Oh, okay. And they came out for a night of comedy. And, you know, we went out there and, you know, they have the attention span of two, three-year-old children. You know, right. they're just, and it got to the point where, you know, we stopped doing material and we're just interacting with them right. the whole night. So I, I just abandoned because when you do comedy, it's organic. You know, you have that thing in your mind where I'm going to talk about this, 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 but if the audience isn't Right, clicking, you have to work off their energy, You got to work course. off their energy. So they just started throwing stuff at me like oh. pizza, bagels, you know, like baseball. And we just started going back and forth and it was the best time and it, it got to the point the the uh, the chaperones and everybody the supervisors would you know they they, they got my number and they go the, it, they, you know they want to they want to see you again Why Jana, don't, you know that's yeah. so awesome you know so everybody thanked us for that night and everything that's amazing and, yeah and then we went out to the we went out to their center in Santa Monica and spent some time with them as well so I think that that event you know right there just basically just you know just 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 breaks down comedy in a nutshell for yeah. me because it's if you can make a difference in somebody's life look we all have problems you know and and it could be financial it could be marital it could be you know emotional you know whatever it is um, people come to see a comedy show to forget their problems. Yeah. And and for a brief moment in time, I think everybody you know forgot their issues and yeah. problems and had a great time that night. So for me, that, look, I, I get goosebumps every time I talk no, about I this. No, I know. You know. I mean, that that's so, such a beautiful experience yeah, that you yeah, had. It so, really, really is. And yeah. as I said, I mean, comedy doing comedy is not easy. I mean, I'm no. a singer. That's not easy either. But you know, you're just up there alone and you have to make people laugh. Sometimes it's hard because again, just as you said, people have a lot of problems and you know, and it's hard to make people laugh. It's hard to cultivate oh, yeah. that laughter. I, look, I mean, look, I'm not gonna sit here and I'm not gonna stand here and sit here, but I'm not gonna stand here and say, you know, it's, it's always uh, you know, sunshine and rainbows. Right. It's not. I've seen the best comics in the world flop. flop. And it, you know, it gets so bad and we all have those nights. You get those sweats in the back of your neck, you know, yeah. the flop sweat and it gets so quiet in the club, you can hear ice melting. 
in people's glasses. I mean, that that's like that point where you're like, oh God, how much more oh, time no. do I have to be up here? I know, you and know, time and just, goes by so slow. And time slow. goes by slow, slowly. It's like being back in school, yeah. you know, and just waiting for that clock to slide to three, right. you know, three, three o'clock and I'm out of here. But uh, yeah, so you have the good nights, you have the bad nights. Right. But, you know, the, the trick is to have more good nights than bad nights. Of course, <laughs> and, of uh, course. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's very, it's hit and miss because I've done jokes that kill at other venues and stuff and people love it. And I do the same jokes with another crowd and they're like, yeah. It depends yeah, on it the just, crowd. It depends on the crowd. So once again, you got to feed off the energy. Yeah. Of the crowd. Um, and actually, I mean, it's kind of hard to make Armenians laugh because uh. we're generally more of like, like we really, I feel like we enjoy sad songs. Like I myself, I'm Armenian. I thoroughly like sad songs. It, well, we're and bred, like, we're we're bred to like so, it, that's why. Yeah, we like wearing black. <laughs> we're very you know just like i don't want to say dismal it's just hard to make us laugh sometimes although we do have our celebrations where yeah, we're it's, it's, singing dancing da -da 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 -da. it's a misconception because you know everybody always thinks armenians are so hard to make laugh and stuff but we're really not we're fun loving people you're you like know? i've had good luck with it yeah, well, that's i've had, good, I've had great luck with them now arabs that's on the other true. hand <laughs> oh really like i don't understand what no it arabs is. will just stand there like that's funny okay that was good you know that's very funny maybe they're check. laughing yeah. inside but uh, yeah yeah they're like you know. laughing out loud inside yeah i've seen, i've had a lot of arabs i'd look around the audience and they, you know they're not smiling or laughing at the end of the night they come to me and go that's a great show i like you you're very you funny, are very funny. Yeah, yeah, they, they're not allowed to laugh at all arabs you know they can't do that's it that's hilarious but, uh, yeah armenians you know we just you know, we, uh, well, a lot of times when I first started, nobody knew I was Armenian. So when I would do these jokes, everybody would come up and be like, hey man, you're saying stuff, bad, bad stuff about my people. I go, yes, I love high. Hey, let me buy you a beer. You know? So, you know, like, oh, okay, it comes okay, out okay, very physical and they're like, I'll put you on audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In. You know, that's so, funny. You know, that was, that was, yeah, it's funny. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's that whole thing of like, like if, if you're funny, you're funny. And, you know, you can make even monks laugh. Yeah. You know, if you're funny enough. So, nice. You know, yeah. Yeah, so you've disproved that whole thing where it's hard to make Armenians up. I, I like it. So. Yeah. True talent. <laughs> um, and so one more question for you is, who are your inspirations, first of all? Um, I would say top two. And who would you aspire to work with that you have not yet worked with? Well, my wife and my friends say I complain a lot. So I think really? I, I rant, I complain a lot about everything. Oh, and, okay. Uh, you know, so it comes off a little in my in my comedy as well. Even I'm complaining about food, I complain about relationships. So it's okay. It adds to your performance. It adds to my performance, and it's part of my character. So I would say my biggest inspiration. I know this is very cliche, George Carlin. I, oh, I, yeah, he's cool. You know, I I grew up listening to George Carlin and the Seven Things You Can't See on TV bit was groundbreaking when I was right. a child in the '80s. Um, because you remember in the 80s, it was all wholesome family entertainment. Right, it wasn't right. the reality crap that it is on now with the uh, Kardashians. That's why I don't, yeah. yeah. exactly. So, you know, so I, I, you know, George Carlin, you know, spoke to me. Um, right. Dennis Miller, you know, I like Dennis's, you know, stand-up as well. He's very es esoteric and, and intellectual, you know, mm -hmm. es esoteric sorry, and intellectual. And, uh, you know, so... Um, I like I like Dennis Miller and um, you know Eddie Izzard. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Eddie Izzard. Eddie is. I'm not. Eddie, but I'm gonna look him up after we leave. Look him up. Eddie's very Eddie's Eddie's a very talented comedian from England. Uh, he's a transvestite. You know, he comes out and says that, and he even does acts in his women's outfit. You oh, know? okay. He's married with three kids. He just likes to dress in women's clothing. Interesting. So that's his that's his gimmick. And Eddie is very funny, very intellectual. You know. Um, so those three were kind of like my inspirations, you know, and, um, awesome. and the, yeah, the fourth one was probably Richard Jenny as well, but he passed away. Um, but yeah, I would, if I had to say, you know, a comic that I'd love to work with, it'd have to be Eddie Izzard. I would love to work with Eddie on something, man. I mean, he just, he's one of those guys where you just want to grab him, like, come here, and just yeah. give him a little noogie, you know? Nice. Like, yeah, so he's, uh, he's very good. I met him one night at the comedy store, and he was doing a spot, and I go, is there, is there, I just want to, you know, say, you know, you're one of my inspirations for comedy and it's a pleasure meeting you. My, right. name's, my name is Basil. He goes, Basil? He goes, are you English? He goes, no, I'm Armenian, but my last name is Basil. He goes, oh, okay. So immediately, he just said, are you English? You know, I'm like, <laughs> no. I'm like, no. You know. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so that, that would probably be it. Very know. cool. Mm -hmm. I'm sad to see you go, Ara. Oh, it's okay. Please come back to Music Box. We love you here. Absolutely. This is like 
the funniest <laughs> and like most lighthearted. And I loved my interview with you. Shout out to I had a great time too. Thank you so much for having my me. My pleasure. My yeah. pleasure. You are always welcome here. Thank you. And you guys check out arabasil.com for all other information and to tap into Ara's world. Uh, yeah. And of course on Facebook. Yes, on Facebook and Twitter. And also um, join my mailing list because I do send out notifications on future shows and events. And make sure to buy my DVD running on Armenian time. And that'll do it. Yes, yeah. the mailing list, that's very, very important, yes. especially with someone like him who always has juicy projects going on. So check that out. Thanks for tuning into Music Box. I'll see you guys next week. See you later. <laughs> Thank that you so awesome. much. Man.